another week of intense Overwatch League action is over. At times it was really competitive and interesting, but at other points some of the matches were a little one-sided. Yet at the end of it, most of the stage playoff implications have been decided and determined. So today, in the Stage 3 Week 4 review, I'm going to go over what happened briefly before seeing how my daily predictions fared, as I hoped to bounce back from a miserable result last week. First I only saw 3 series, and not the regular 4, but regardless, it kicked off the week in style with 3 back-to-back -back competitive and entertaining series. First was one of the matches of the week, as the Hangzhou Spark took on the LA Valiant, with both teams perhaps having the best runs of form of anyone so far this stage. As expected, this was a close back and forth affair, with Hangzhou looking the stronger when the compositions were closer to traditional 3-3, whilst when the team fights became more centred around DPS engagements, the Valiants took control. What was interesting, however, was that at many times it appeared that the Spark were able to effectively control LA by using more mobile compositions that would quickly take down Karif and catch out Shex, the two key members contributing to the Valiant's success. Although, as soon as these strategies started working, for one reason or another, they abandoned them, allowing LA back into the series. At its conclusion, however, ultimately, the team that looked the stronger throughout held the edge in map 5 as Hangzhou won control to win the series 3-2 thanks to standout performances from Godsby and Bebe, that firmly cemented their top team status whilst putting a little dampener on what's been an incredible stage so far for the Valiant. The following series saw the Paris Eternal play the Seoul Dynasty, what can only be described as an odd series, made a little sadder with the news that Fisher had retired, meaning that Marvel remained in for the whole series. Yes, it was competitive, but at times both teams just seemed to throw away great opportunities being given to them, as Seoul battled through to lock down a 3-1 victory and take one step closer to the Stage 3 playoffs. Finishing the day was the anticipated series between the Shock and the Hunters, which was a brilliant watch. Armin again put in a Yotachad performance, as San Francisco once more stumbled in the face of unorthodox DPS and Sombra comps, falling short yet again as the match went to 5 maps, handing Chengdu the upset win, putting them back in the hunt for the playoffs, whilst reopening patched wounds for the Shock. By comparison, Friday was a much less exciting day, despite having such promise heading into it. Every series was dominated by one side, beginning with the LA Valiant, who bounced back after their narrow loss the day before, to surprisingly destroy the London Spitfire, despite everyone expecting more from them after their great showing against New York the week before. Guard returned to the side at Sombra, which seemed to be a good idea, but in doing this they subbed out profit and not birdering, which was interesting to say the least. As hard as Fury tried to carry his team, in the end the LA side, behind Fact Fiction, Shax and Karif, were just always in control, taking the 4-0 win and guaranteeing their spot in the Stage 3 playoffs. The big news heading into the next series was that Toronto acquired Mangachu, and he would be starting against the Gladiators. He made some nice plays, but even his inclusion wasn't enough to turn the Defiant's performance completely on its head, as they unsurprisingly were picked apart for a second four over the day. Friday concluded with another seemingly unfair matchup, as the Houston Outlaws faced the Washington Justice. That said, the Justice was somewhat competitive, and did cause Houston the occasional issue, as they were recovering from their horrible loss from the Mayhem the week before. But even drawing a map was the best they could manage, as the Outlaws picked up the series 3-0 to continue their charge towards the playoffs. In contrast, the weekend kicked off with an incredibly surprising banger of a series, as the Dallas Fuel went up against the New York Excelsior. Pre-game, this series had a 4-0 firmly on the books, with both sides on opposite ends of form. Yet with Taimu returning to the side, Dallas came out on fire, picking apart New York, who themselves were sloppy, making many of the same mistakes they had the week prior into DPS comps that had made their series against London so close. At halftime, it was 2-0 fuel, with time with the pick of the side, but from here on, the Excelsior tightened up as their Sombra Goats comp started to click and punish the fuel's mistakes as they pulled off the reverse sweep to win 3-2 and avoid what would have been an ugly loss with Libero and Sabiolbi crucially upping their performances in the second half. Boston vs Philadelphia 2 played very similarly to their meeting earlier on this stage, with both sides very evenly matched as the series ebbed back and forth with Boston feeling a lot more comfortable on their new hackfist comps in the same way that the Fusion were on their Sombra Goats. It went down to a tense Game 5 where both teams have excelled in the past, but it was Philly who once again came out on top to keep their slim playoff hopes alive. The two games to end the day were less exciting, with the Spark unsurprisingly annihilating Florida 4-0 despite some promising displays from their new faces, before Shanghai effectively held off Guangzhou, with Ding once more the star as they kept pace towards their own playoff spot as they controlled their destiny with a 3-1 win. Sunday looked to be another great day of matches, with a lot of the top teams in action, and all eyes were on the first match of the day, 
and the game of the week as the LA Gladiators took on the Vancouver Titans, with many wanting to see how the Titans would respond after losing their first regular season game against the Valiant last week, looking terrible playing into and running Sombra. The answer was emphatic, as a subbed in stitch in at Sombra made Vancouver look fantastic. They dominated the game for the most part, and after one week, it looks like they have downloaded the meta in its entirety, as the Titans went on to convincingly take the match four row, condemning the Gladiators to have to wait and see if they can make the playoffs, whilst confirming their own place. Fun fact, that's now the fourth consecutive match of the week it has been a four row. Not really great, is it? London's miserable weep was confirmed when they faced the San Francisco Shock, in a match that many gave them a chance in, the Shock's earlier loss to Chengdu. They just looked lost and off the pace as the Shock rebounded in style, with Rascal putting on an imperious display on Baptiste, helping his team to a strong 4-0 that confirmed their spot and knocked London out of a staged playoff race. Houston played Toronto in the third series of the day, with a big talking point being Logics coming into the side alongside Mangachu for Toronto. The pair started out brilliantly, with Logics playing really well, as the Defiance DPS lineup dominated the early engagements, and even saw their side go one up in the series. At many times, the Outlaws looked a bit messy and not nearly as clean as their performances from earlier on this stage. They did slowly battle their way back into the match, and in the end, won out a tough slog. Full sign seems positive for Toronto right now, with their new look Western lineup. Whilst Houston look a little shaky heading to the stage 3 playoffs. This week concluded with an important matchup between the Chengdu Hunters and Seoul Dynasty, with Seoul needing the win to confirm their playoff spot in a couple of weeks' time. What followed was an interesting series, but to be perfectly honest, I thought Chengdu looked the better side and seemed to have the dynasty's number at times. Yet they could not convert their performance into objectives, as Seoul, very unconvincingly, managed somehow to pick up three maps and draw the other to win the series 3-0. Now let's get on to looking at my predictions. The week prior had not been my best display, as I squandered a solid start with a dismal showing on the weekend, giving me a score of 8-8 that had taken me to 25-13. But this week I rebounded fantastically with an impressive 13 and 1 week, taking my record to a much stronger 38 and 14. My one loss came in the biggest upset of the week as the Chengdu Hunters lived up to their unpredictable reputation, defeating the San Francisco Shock. Elsewhere I managed to get six results absolutely perfect and some others quite close themselves, with the only team I was significantly missing on being the London Spitfire, who I fought after their impressive loss to New York last week would have been a lot more competitive and suffering two blowout knockdowns by teams of comparatively similar strengths to Excelsior in the Valiant and Shock. But I guess that just reaffirms the fact they are closer to a mid-table side, and that perhaps New York aren't as strong as I and many others previously thought, especially now being reinforced with their scare against Dallas this week. And with that, we reach the end of my Stage 3, Week 4 review, and I'd like to thank you for watching. As I mentioned yesterday, I'll be back tomorrow with my updated power rankings, but if you enjoyed and don't want to miss out, Please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter for this continuing overwatchly coverage and content, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.